Hello. My name is Miquel Lima. I am from the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, and today I'll be presenting this work entitled Implementation of the Repeat Case Studies in Science Communication, also authored by Douglas Santos and Salad Queiroz. I would like to start talking about argumentation, which is presented in numerous stages of science investigation, such as uh, raising hypotheses, crystal predictions, and drawing conclusions. And there has been the recent years increase in the number of studies about argumentation, about uh, educational seniors aimed to promote argumentation to develop students' argumentation skills that show how this is important and show its relevance for developing students' reasoning, critical thinking, and also understanding of the nature of the science. And about those educational scenarios, special attention is given to those involving case studies. And what are the case studies? It is a teaching method where students, through narratives, face uh, some problems, uh, a dilemma, and they are also encouraged to find a solution and argue about those solutions to solve the case. There are several types of case studies, and one of them is the interrupted case study, uh, which presents a problem in a progressive disclosure format, and also the narrative is usually developed following the content of a research article. And with that, their case portrays a problem that was actually faced by researchers in a field of knowledge, uh, which is in our case, it is Cambridge. And there is reports about this close relationship uh, between case studies and the promotion of argumentation, which is remarkable, especially at higher education in Cambridge. So our aim with this work is to report the application of three derivative case studies to develop argumentation skills uh, of first year undergraduate Cambridge students in a Brazilian university that or enrolled in a science communication course. The three interrupted case studies produced were within the theme water resource contaminated by heavy metals and their effects on human health, which case was solved by a group of five students in the science communication course. They had to go through a series of activities to solve the case, to find a solution to the problem that were being portrayed in the case, uh, which included some activities like raising hypotheses, choosing sample points in the map, choosing equipment to do the analysis, and also uh, discuss the data, which were the data the, in the research article that originated the, the case. And as a final activity, they had to perform an oral presentation with the solution the group was chose to give to the case. To see how the interrupted case studies promoted the uh, argumentation, we analyzed the oral presentation speech following these steps, which started with a selection of the representation sections we would like to analyze which were results and discussion and conclusions because the argumentation speech is most located on these sections. Then we define the analysis units as each new slide the students had to use during these sections. Then we sorted the propositions, the claims that the speech on epistemic levels. I'm going to show about this in a moment. Then we did a validation of the analysis and discussed the results. So talking a little about the epistemic levels model that we use it to analyze the argument of the students. Uh, according to Kelly and Takao on their study about scientific writing, the scientists usually to rhetorical movements uh, to defend their ideas, to defend their, their research. And those movements usually start uh, with specific statements related to their data and experiments. 
and they are going adding more layers, more knowledge and and getting away from this particular set of data to develop more generalized statements or theories. And with that, Kellen Takao proposed this model to analyze arguments uh, and their epistemic status, uh, which is made of six epistemic levels. The model depends on the on the field of knowledge that it, it is on use, and here it's adapted for our situation, for the case studies and our activity. And use this to analyze an argument it consists of sorting the proposition, the students' propositions into these levels according to those definitions. Uh, at the lowest level, we have the propositions making or explicit reference to data of the R students present in graph charts, tables, and maps. Uh, at the second level, we have the propositions identify and describing properties of environmental samples from the order of study. At the third level, we have the propositions stability, partners, trends, and relations among environmental samples from the order of study. And the, at the fourth level, we have propositions in the form of theoretical claims illustrated with data. At the fifth level, we have the propositions in the form of theoretical claims specific to the art of the suit. And at the highest level, level six, we have the general propositions describing environmental process or scientific concepts usually present in textbooks or technical standards. So we use it this, this model to uh, <coughs> analyze the the student's argument to see what are their epistemic status. And here are our results. This table presents uh, the assortment of propositions on the six epistemic levels on of the claims, the propositions found on each sections for the three presentations, the oral presentations that we analyze it. For example, for group one, 17 propositions uh, in the result and discussion were found at level one, and two of them were found in level six. We are using three criteria to analyze these data and classify uh, argument as strong or weak. The first criteria is about the amount of claims across levels and a good argument is one that has uh, claims on all levels which occur to all the three groups, all the three oral presentations we see, all of them have at least six at the total amount on each one of these levels. So all three are good corresponding to this criteria. The second criteria is about the ratio of data and theory claims uh, because theoretical claims cannot be alone, it has to be supported by data. The total, total amount of uh, claims on level 1 and claims on level 4 and 5 have to be proportional. And it is balanced on the Auto presentation for group one and balance also on the group two, but it's unbalanced at the group three because we have a total of 21 uh, propositions on level one and a total of 14 propositions on levels four and five, which means that the data were not very well explored. And looking at our more specific eye for the speech that was in develop on this presentation, the students showed I used it, the image, the data, the charts, the, the maps and tables, uh, like the image should speak for themselves. So uh, there are not a lot of 
the article claims here. The last criteria is about uh, the claims that are presented in each one of those sections from the our presentation uh, and their classification on the epistemic levels. We are expecting as a good argument that results and discussion claims were sorted on all levels and the claims on the conclusion sections if it is a good argument would be only on the highest level since students can't usually can't during an oral presentation present any new data they have to summarize the fines at the conclusion. So for those two groups, their arguments are not very strong in relate to the third criteria. Our final conclusions are that group one and group two had developed a strong argument where their co-claims are supported by experimental data. They use the data well and these results also demonstrate an adequate understanding of the of their activity and its aims and for group three they develop a weak argument because they didn't match the criteria two and three they didn't explore the data in a satisfactory way and visual representations were taken as obvious and were not very well correlated to the theoretical claims and conclusion that they proposed. This work anyway highlighted the possibility to elaborate and apply a, a teaching sequence involving case studies on a teaching sequence based on the solving of case studies and they have this uh, case study method have this desirable tendency to develop uh, not only contents but also but also skills and abilities at the chemistry teaching here are some of our references i would like to thank the fapes the sao paulo foundation research for the financial support and also Thank you for your attention and goodbye.